We hear more of Brother Billy. More of Brother Billy. I got in a little early before you did, and I hung up my jacket over there. Oh. Yeah, right, right there. So you don't mind, do you? No, I don't. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Oh, oh I forgot to take off my scarf, though. Oh, man. Oh, hey, look what I got on today. Look. See what it says there? Home, oh, 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 oh. Homeland Security. Homeland Security. That's right. They've been fighting it since, what did that say there? Since 1492. 1492. That, that, that's, like, that's like Geronimo and his boys. As originally, they, they wanted to keep the colonial settlers out, so they picked up arms. They protested. You know, but in fact, you know about protesting, because, you know, I think they're still doing the stupid thing there. But, you know, I know something about student movements and, and protests. I know, I know a little history because, like, you know, far as I know, like the, the famous one, Civil Rights Era, was out of the uh, Southern Christian Leadership Conference. It wasn't really out of that. that there's a woman, uh, Ella Josephine Baker. She was part of that, and, and she helped start this other group, uh, the youth kind of people, you know, uh, uh, called uh, SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. And she, was, she helped start that, and a lot of people came through that. Because, uh, guy that was the mayor of Washington, D.C. Matter of fact, he was one of the first people, and maybe he was the first guy that was, because he was young at the time. A bunch of other civil rights people came to him, Julian Bond, and, uh, John Luce, Congressman John Luce, a bunch of people. But you know, they started to change when, uh, when, when a Bronx boy came down. That was Stokely Carmichael, Bronx High School of Science. In fact, one time, you know, when I was in, when I was in school, uh, up there in the Bronx. I went to Theodore Roosevelt High School in the Bronx. And we had this, about 67, yeah, we had this big student protest. We all left high school and went up to Bronx High School of Science and met all the schools, like uh, Vantage Chats, all the Bronx schools, you know, Deepwood, Clinton, the girls' school, uh, Walton, all the schools. We all came together, Big Rat. You know, like they was doing it, because Big Rat is all the schools, all the high schools. Um, but anyway, Stokely Carmichael, but it has been gone, you know, he, he's down south and, and the source for the student nonviolent coordinating committee. And Ella Baker, she stayed with them. You know, she was an old lady, well, she was, well, she was old, elder, well, she was a middle-aged lady, I guess, at the time. But she wouldn't bother them, you know, I mean, she would be with the meetings. In fact, she had a little asthma, and this was when they had to smoke, everybody was smoking smoke filled rooms, you know, we had meetings all night long. And she, well, I wasn't down there, but she was there, she'd have a handkerchief over her mouth, but she wouldn't say she'd be there if they asked her something. You know, and Miss Ella, blah, 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 she'd answer the question, but she wouldn't, you know, do anything. In fact, they kicked her out of uh, student, uh, out of a, a, a Southern Christian Leadership Conference. I don't know why they kicked her out, but she stayed with the kids, you know. Anyway, I bring that up. I wanted to say, now that was a movement. In fact, they was pretty smart. At one point, they realized that, like, for instance, because everybody could join in, white, black, all the rest of that stuff, but they realized when the white kids would come in, because they had different kind of education, they would always ascend to leadership positions quickly, like treasurer or something like that. You know, it was an important position. So at one point, when Stokely Carmack was in charge, or H. Rack Brown, one of those cats was in charge, but they said, hey, look, we ain't never going to be able to learn this stuff if we let you, you know, so they, I won't say they kicked the white guys out, but they, they kicked them out. I mean, they, actually, no white guy has no place to go, so the white guys started their own, so like SDS and all that, that became the, the, the anti-war movement. But anyway, no. but all that happened, uh, that's, that's civil rights. But now modern, not modern, but student protest kind of, I was involved when we took over our school and stuff like that. Well, that, that came about, actually started in Paris, and it started for cultural reasons, you know? What happened was uh, uh, there was this film, they had these film society was playing all the time, then the school wanted to shut the film society down. So they said, hey, you're going to shut us down. So they protested. Then at the same time, it was just in the air, because at the same time, or around the same time, in Mexico, they started. The students were unfair, whatever they did, and they had a protest. Then at the same time, San Francisco State College in California, about the Oakland area, that's where uh, Danny Glover and them was, and he started. Then the other schools, you know, the Yales and, and all the rest of that stuff. At the same time, it's about, I guess, about 1969, I guess it was. But anyway, 1969, that's when Columbia started. But before that happened, I, was, I had just gone to Bronx Community College. Now, here's the important part of this. <coughs> I got to tell you about this one. You see, we had a group called Simba, was our, 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 our 
political, whatever it was, a group, you know, student group. And, uh, and we had a little cadre. I believe we were revolutionary cells, to be quite frank. There were six of us, three, three, three boys, three girls. Well, we were young, 17, 18, or 18 at the time. And, uh, and uh, we studied. We were like the brain, the brain trust of the larger group, Simba, you see. And we studied, we studied like Nkrumba, you know, Little Black Book, and we studied like, 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 like Che and, 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 and Mao, and Little Red Book, you know, we studied all the revolutionary things, phenomenon, you know, we, we, we were serious, you know, because we did some revolutionary things, what we thought was right, what we was, you know, we were serious. So what happened, though, was when we took over the school, all of a sudden, we who was down there, you know, because we had been mentored by this, these two brothers, Bob and Billy Shepard, who had been in Vietnam, they was telling us all about this stuff. Because about that time, actually before they came, one of those untold stories is that the Viet Cong, what they would do, they would get close to the American camps, and they'd be yelling to the brothers, saying, why are you fighting here with us? You gotta fight at home. They don't respect you at home. Ooh, that was heavy enough. They don't talk about that. But that's what, I think that Bobby and Billy, you know, they, they came out of that kind of thing. And they was teaching us, you know, well, teaching us, they were with us. And uh, when we took over the school, all of a sudden, all us people in the country, we had to take positions of responsibility because, you know, there was some leadership there. And so what we did, well, I was in charge of, guess what? I was in charge of, um, strangely enough, the, there was a telephone, you know, old telephone thing where you stick the telephone in, you know, and you talk to people and say, okay, you connect them to the right thing. Well, I was in charge of that section there, you know. And uh, so I told him, look, here's what we do. When you answer the phone, you say, this is Bronx Community College. This school has been liberated. You cannot speak to anyone. And he unplugged the thing. Yeah. If I had to say the same thing, Bronx Community College, this school has been liberated. You cannot speak to anyone. While we negotiate with the, you know, the powers that be, was trying to negotiate for a bit more black studies and you know, all that kind of thing. Now, one, one, one time we had this white guy and he was cursing. I said, no, 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 we don't do that here. I had to kick him out. See, that's leadership. You know, I don't know what kind of leadership. I mean, my, my whole point really is that with all this drama and everything like that, leadership is leadership. Whether you're young, old, or whatever happened, you got to provide some leadership. You can't just, oh, they did this in the future, in the past, and then you, 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 you don't update or you don't, you know. I'm not criticizing what's going on today. I'm just saying I don't know if people are really thinking and being leaders. But, but that's just me, I'm, you know, I'm just one of these dispatches, one of the arts director emeritus, of the, that would be me, T, from the Pattersons. Uh, I used to, well, I'm still a cultural revolutionary, but I'm not really a revolutionary, I'm more of an evolutionary. Oh, letting you know what I only suspect. Mm -hmm.